This is my model. This is what it is supposed to look like. See, this is a VTuber, a virtual YouTuber. And this is probably a VRM model. At least it might be. Mine is. It's a unique community, but VRM is meant for VR applications, and I think will be a major part of the internet in the future. So they're worth looking into. The VRM spec is written against the GLTF specifications. They're so similar I can just change the file extension and drop in my model. GLTF stands for GL Transmission Format. I'm assuming the GL stands for Graphics Library, but I couldn't actually confirm this. Anyways, Raylib. The C Graphics Library I've adopted over the past year has implementations for GLTF, so I figured it'd be pretty easy to work with. This is where the fun begins. See, last year I dusted off my Kinect to use in some prototypes, and had this nifty skeleton tracking data. I also had this model with bones and rigging. It would be pretty cool if I could combine the two. Raylib has GLTF functions, I just have to map the skeleton data to the model's bones and call some function. A week. Tops. It was not a week. It was a month. Turns out, none of these were really meant for this application, and at least one of them is kinda janky. And so the debugging began. Thankfully, the documentation was somewhat vague, so I had to read example code and infer what I could from whatever tutorials I came across. Thankfully? I meant painfully. I had an instance of Visual Studio running with my application, another instance for recompiling a modified version of the Raylib source code, and yet another instance trying to dissect the model's raw data, which is stored in a JSON file structure. GLTF is described as a last mile format. It's designed to work closely with graphics libraries. Being low level means it's easy to make changes, and it's also really easy to shoot yourself in the foot with those changes. I won't bore you with all the gritty technical details, just some of them, like half, what I remember. It's all blurred together into some kind of coding haze. First of all, I wanted the ability to manipulate the model, make some change, see that reflected in the application. Sounds easy. As you can see, it took a while to figure out how to do that. See, as a last mile format, GLTF is meant for last mile things like being inserted into the rendering pipeline or playing pre-built animations. I thought I could just overwrite some model data and reinsert the model into the scene, but that was a bad plan. There is a lot of memory manipulation and handoffs that have to happen to go from this file to this. Your engine probably doesn't even support the full specifications feature set. For example, Engines usually only support four bones per vertex, but you technically could assign up to 256 or 65,536, depending on your joints, access, or component type. First off, models. The rendering engine doesn't really care about models. All it cares about are vertices in a scene. Each vertex is associated with the following information. Position data, to figure out what pixels it affects a color mapping to figure out what color those pixels should be, and normal vector or material info depending on the shader you're using to modify the pixel as necessary. Stick all this data into an appropriate buffer and OpenGL spits out a frame. The issue is that we are human. We're not great at manipulating thousands of things by hand every fraction of a second. We are really good at forming abstractions. So that is what we do. First, vertices are grouped into meshes, which are the objects in our virtual world. Each of these objects is mapped onto an image structure in memory, which is its texture. The vertex to texture coordinate map helps us tell the computer what color to render and between which vertices. Let's say you want more detailed movements, meshes moving relative to each other, like a human character. We can take multiple meshes, group those together, and then map the mesh's relative structure to a new memory structure, which is the bones. 
These bones make animation really easy by acting as levers the animator can use to pose all the meshes, and by extension, position all the vertices. I think this is why characters in 90s games were so blocky. Each moving body part needed its own mesh. Which brings us to the solution GLTF uses, skinning. Mesh intersections look blocky. This is suboptimal. It would be great if the mesh could stretch along multiple bones. And it can. Remember, a mesh is a collection of vertices. Before, each vertex would move according to its assigned bone. To get the deformation effect, we want a vertex to move a little bit with one bone, but be partially stuck to another. So we take the vertex and assign it multiple bones. The stickiness of the vertex to each bone is also specified. This is the bone weight. We can calculate the position the vertex should be in if it was assigned solely to each bone, and the skinned position is the weighted average of those. Adjusting the bone weights adjusts where the vertex ends up. By gradually tapering bone weights across a mesh, you can get a nice bend. At first, I thought the bone IDs were assigned incorrectly and that the blender type needed a new function to import. Turns out it was just marked wrong and I could import it with the default script. Anyway, memory stuff. Like I said, the graphics library doesn't care about all of this nitty gritty, so I had to add a pose script that would update the GL vertex buffer data with newly calculated values. Updating the buffer was easy. Figuring out how to calculate the new values was not. See, vertices are just points in space. To apply a bones rotation, I need to move that vertex to the location it would be in if its bone was at the origin, rotate it, and then translate it back. That said, GLTF is meant to hold animations, which store deltas, not absolute values. I think. I might be wrong. I'm probably wrong. I wanted to move my model according to the absolute skeleton tracking positions my connect was spitting out. Moreover, rotating a parent bone won't affect the child bone's local rotation, but it should move its vertices around. So local rotations need to be propagated through the entire skeleton. Then, since the connect and the VRM bones are different, I had to roughly pair them up and generate the appropriate quats from that. It took a while, but it's working, mostly. I now just need blend shape face tracking and hand tracking, which is gonna require some kind of custom device before I can move on to developing the environment. Great. I should probably document some things before I completely forget. A single G file GLTF is going to contain blocks of raw bit data called URIs. These are texture images, vertex, vector arrays, etc. They're referenced in the JSON bit, bits of the file by a buffer array containing the byte length and URI name. This buffer is itself referenced by a buffer view array containing more information as to how the bytes are packed into the URI. The buffer view is referenced itself by the accessor array, which defines the type of data being accessed. For example, vec2, vec3, whatnot. Now you've probably realized by now that GLTF is very hierarchical. Different aspects of the model are abstracted into groups that comprise the root scene or model. A model is composed of mesh arrays, skin arrays, animation arrays, and material arrays. The JSON portions of this abstraction define general characteristics, behavior, and inter interrelations of these elements. They each contain accessors to the actual data. For example, the mesh's JSON object has a primitive array with an attribute object that is itself has a parameter joints zero with a value of five. Yeah, meant for computers, not humans. I believe this refers to the fifth object of the accessors array, which links to the actual values of the vertex to joint mappings for this mesh, etc., etc. I'm going to sleep now. So after much testing, I finally discovered that 
all of the work I had done to, to convert the procedures from unsigned car to unsigned short make all of the pointer arithmetic work properly and then the hours of debugging trying to figure out the GLTF loading process was unnecessary because it was just marked wrong and it used unsigned car anyway which is very frustrating great but it, I can't get it to rotate which is fun I guess uh, my skeleton and it's I mean, it's, it's trying, I, I guess, it's, it's trying. Right arm, attempt one. Yeah, it's uh, not great. The test of motion two, kind of. I can just brute force the, no, I cannot. 